OK, I want to talk to you about how data is presented and specifically with this idea of the true class limits. So I've got a table here with some class limits, but I want to turn them into their true class limits. What I mean by that is these look like these have been rounded to whole numbers here. So because these have been rounded, we've got some data that is missing. So the gaps, so there are gaps. There are gaps in the groups or the classes. What I mean by that is, where do you put 12.2 kilograms? Well, yeah, we know it's probably going to go inside this group because it looks like it would round to 12 kilograms, but it's not obvious. So if they've been rounded, I think we need to be a little bit more specific about writing them as their true class limits. So I think that the 10 to 12 group actually can contain something from 9.5 and including 9.5, and I've put W for weight, all the way up to 12.5. I think I've used the less than sign because if it was actually equal to 12.5, I would have rounded it up to 13 and I would have put this cat inside this group that we've got here. The 13 to 15 group, well, it has to have no gaps at all. So that means that if it's going to 12.5 here, it's going to need to start at 12.5. I want there to be no gaps in the classes or no gaps in the groups. So that these ones that I'm writing here are my true limits. They're the real limits that are going on behind the scenes. So it's going to be 12.5 to, well, 15, all the way up to 15.5. So it's then going to be 15.5 up to 18.5. You're just adding and subtracting those little half points. And then we get 18.5 all the way up to 20.5. So let's talk about the class widths of these as well, because I think if you thought about the class widths of these ones, I think you'd say this had a class width. I think it's had a class width of two. But when you look at the class width of this one, it's going to be 12.5 minus 9.5. So the class width is actually three for this one. So the class width for that one is three. The class width for this one is three. The class width for all of them is actually going to be three. It just doesn't look that it's going to be like that. Oh, hang on, this last one I don't think is going to be three, is it? Um, 16. Yeah, this last one's actually got a, a class width of two. And that's because in this time it looks like it has a class width of one. So you have to be really, really careful because sometimes the data is presented in ways that isn't the true way of it being done. And it means that it can affect things like the width of the class, which is going to have some impact about how we calculate stuff like the median. So the class width um, must use the true class limits. Let's have a look at these true class limits with some examples that we've got here. So for the ones in bold, what I want you to do is to decide what is the true lower class boundary of this one that we've got? What is the upper class boundary and what is the class width? Now, if they're presented in this kind of way, there's no gaps. So this is already in its true class limits form. We don't really need to do that much work. But there are a couple of them where I think maybe you're going to need to actually do some adjustments. So pause the video for the ones in bold, see if you can answer these questions. And then I'm going to go through them in just a moment. OK, so for this first one, it is already in its true class limits form. There's no gaps. So because there's no gaps, I can just go straight in and say for the bold group, the lower class boundary is 200, the upper is 210. So the class width, the difference between them is just 10. So for this second one that we've got here, I think there's probably some rounding that has happened here. So it's actually going to be between 3.5 and 6.5, rounded half down from the 4 and half up from the 6. So the lower class boundary is 3.5. The upper is 6.5, which means the class width is the difference between those, which is actually 3. Most people, if they look at this, would think, oh, yeah, the class boundary is 2 because the difference between 4 and 6 is 2. But it's not. It's 3. So this one here is actually going to be um, not in its true class limits. There are some gaps inside here, so we're going to have to adjust them. I think that means it's going to be 30.5 all the way up to 40.5. So the lower class boundary is 30.5. 
the upper is 40.5. And when you subtract those, the class width is 10. Most people would say the class width is 9, but in reality, the true class width is 10. This last one, it's already in its true class limits form. So we don't need to do any adjustments. So that lower class boundary is 29. There's no gaps there. The upper class is 31, and the difference between them is just 2. OK, so what I will do is now I'm going to use this in an example to do some linear interpolation with some true class limits. So it says here, summarised below are the distances to the nearest mile travelled to work by a random sample of 120 commuters. So N is 120 and we want to find an estimate for the median. So we know that the median is going to be in 120 divided by 2. It's going to be in the 60th position. So the 60th position, I very kindly put the cumulative frequency already in this bit. The 60th one is going to be, uh -huh, it's going to be in this group here because it's going to take us from the 29th to the 72nd, which is the 60th one is going to be inside that group. So let's draw out the same thing that we did before. I'm going to start off with the frequencies on the top. So I'm going to do the 29 and the 72, 29th, the 72nd and the 60th is probably going to be a bit closer to this end. Don't worry about that bit too much. Now, here's the important bit. It's not actually 20 to 29, is it? It's actually 19.5 up to 29.5. And I know it seems really fussy, but you'll lose the marks if you don't do this properly in the exam. So it's going to be 19.5 miles here. And then it's going to go up to 29.5 miles here. And we're looking for the median, which is at the 60th position. So the median is going to be the starting point, which is your 19.5 miles, plus this fraction. Now, this fraction is the 29 and 60, the difference between 29 and 60, which is 31, out of 31, sorry, in blue, out of the whole gap, which is the difference between the 29 and the 72. So we'll do 72, take away 29, which is 43, multiplied by the gap on the bottom, which is the gap between 19.5 and 29.5. Well, I can see what that is, but I'm just going to show you that it's multiplying it by 10. So I'm just going to get that all into the calculator. 19.5 plus 31 over 43 multiplied by 10. And so we get that the estimate for the median is 26.7 miles. And I've just done that to three significant figures. You'll see sometimes I'm doing three significant figures. Sometimes I'm doing two decimal places. I'm just doing them randomly because the question hasn't asked me to do it any particular way. OK, so I'm going to ask for you to have a go now at looking at exercise 2C, but just 1A, 3, 4A and 5A, because there are some bits we haven't quite done yet. But I've also got some extra questions here for you to try. You'll need to be careful. Some of them may not have true class limits like this one. They're going to need some adjustment. And the table isn't presented in the normal way. If you want to, you can write the table in a vertical way. But it's the same thing, horizontal. So they all want you to find the estimate for the median. So I've got these three questions here. You can pause them and try them. I've then got a fourth question here as well. You don't need to do um, this bit here. I really shouldn't put this bit. You don't need to use this. So all you want to do for the first part is find the mean. Um, and then you're going to use linear interpolation to estimate the value of the median. Careful for this bit when you find the mean. You still have to use the true class limits and then find the midpoint. But you'll find actually that the midpoint will be the same. It will be the same either way. Why do you think it will be the same either way? Well, if you think about it, let's just have a think, I don't know, 26 and 30. If you're doing 26 and 30, or you're doing 25.5 and 30.5, you've added on 0.5 over here, you've taken away 0 0.5, of, 0 0.5 over here, so the midpoint is still just going to be in the same place. You're just going to add them and divide it by 2. 
I've got the answers for the questions down here so that you can check them and see if you've got them right. Um, I've added these ones in as I didn't think there was very much in the textbook for this. Okay, good luck.